The second thing I want to talk about is TARP, the Troubled Asset Relief Program. Uh, it's a little more than a year old now. Uh, in uh, late September of last year, Secretary Paulson said the financial system is in a significant amount of, of trouble. Interbank lending has just about frozen up. Financial markets are frozen. Uh, and the problem, Secretary Paulson said, was banks are holding on to these toxic assets, these mortgage-backed securities, and the problem is they're really hard to value, so people don't know what they're worth, so you never know, uh, you know, you, uh, I mean, you might make a loan to a firm that next week, because of uh, problems with its assets, ends up going under, uh, so all this lending has, has frozen up, it's ceased. Secretary Paulson said, what we need to do is to set up this troubled asset relief program and what we're going to do, he said, I need seven hundred billion dollars and what we're going to do with that money is to buy up these troubled assets and then the banks, we'll be holding the troubled assets in the troubled asset relief program, uh, the banks then will get money from the treasury, uh, what that will do is to assure other financial institutions about their financial soundness, and so we'll get the, uh, the, the financial system back on its feet again, uh, we'll get interbank lending uh, uh, started again. Uh, so that was Secretary Paulson's claim. And uh, he said it was an emergency. Uh, after about a week of debate or so, uh, the TARP program passed through Congress in early October. Now, we can look back. We have a year uh, of experience. So let me ask you, was Secretary Paulson right about that? Did we need to buy up those toxic assets in order to get the financial system back on its feet? We can see the answer is no, because the money wasn't used for that. Secretary Paulson said, we need to get this $700 billion to buy up those toxic assets. That's not what happened to the money. Uh, the Treasury tried to look for ways to uh, where they could buy those toxic assets, but they're having some difficulties. Things sort of uh, uh, moved along uh, for a while. Uh, they decided on another plan. Uh, they decided what they would do would be to buy equity interest in banks. So they would buy preferred stock. So the federal government then would be stockholder in U.S. banks. So instead of using the money to buy toxic assets, like Secretary Paulson said we needed to do, and Congress approved, instead of doing that, we used that money to partially nationalize our banking system. Secretary Paulson got the CEOs of the nine largest banks in the United States together, told them that what they were going to do was that they were going to, um, they were going to buy preferred stock in uh, these banks and other banks, but he got the CEOs of the, the nine largest banks. He said, we're going to buy equity interest in these banks. The federal government's going to become part owner of your bank. Many CEOs didn't want to do that. But Secretary Paulson strong-armed and he forced them to take the federal money and to have the federal government partially nationalize their banks. What he said was, he didn't want some banks opting out of the program because some were in, some were out, that would identify some banks as weak banks and he didn't want to do that and so as a result every bank had to participate in the program. So a forced nationalization of our banking system. Uh, and of course then uh, the, uh, the banks saw the strings attached because now Congress starts looking at the executive compensation in these banks and saying, wait a minute, we're pouring money into these banks, some of whom didn't even want it. Wait a minute, we're pouring money into these banks, and look at how much the uh, executives are, are making in these banks. Uh, and of course then, when the banks started seeing uh, you know, the, the degree of oversight and control that Congress wanted to exercise over these banks, the banks wanted to get out of the program. By this time, President Obama had uh, been elected. Like I say, this is a bipartisan effort here. Uh, so uh, 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 President Obama had been elected. Uh, the new Treasury, Treasury Secretary Geithner had taken over for Paulson. Uh, and
and uh, the banks wanted to repay, uh, the, the, they wanted to buy back that stock. And uh, Geithner said, oh, not so fast. I, I don't want to sell this stock back yet. Uh, you know, he came up with these stress tests that banks had to pass and so forth, uh, essentially preventing the banks from buying back that preferred stock. In other words, enforcing that federal ownership of the banks. Uh, and and you've got to wonder uh, if Secretary Paulson initially had gone to Congress and instead of saying, we have this troubled asset relief program, we want to buy up these toxic assets, what if he instead had said, I want $700 billion so I can partially nationalize our banking system? What would Congress have said about that? And yet, that's what the money was used for. Uh, and once again, uh, you, you have a system where uh, the, the, the profit and loss aspect that underlies a market economy uh, has, has been uh, uh, cut down. Uh, I mean, you can see the problem if, for certain firms, you tell them, you know, if you make profits, you get to keep the profits. If you make losses, we're going to bail you out. Right? I mean, it, takes, it just takes half of the profit and loss balance away. Right? I mean, sure, you want firms to be entrepreneurial. You want them to take prudent risks because that's where economic progress comes from. But you... But the loss side of it is you also want them to be cognizant of the fact that if they make bad decisions, they end up paying the cost. And so by bailing them out, what you're doing is taking away the loss side of that equation, which ultimately is going to encourage excessively risky uh, behavior on the part of, of executives. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, the Obama stimulus package. Uh, that was about $800 billion that Obama, President Obama said, we need this money now uh, because the economy is in dire straits. This is right after he took office. He wanted to pass that stimulus package. It says the economy is in dire straits, so we need to have this uh, spending bill about uh, $800 billion in order to prop up uh, the economy, in order to keep the economy from falling further. If you look at what was actually in that stimulus bill, uh, not that much of it was oriented toward uh, actual economic stimulus. Uh, a lot of it was just fulfilling President Obama's campaign promises. So we'll spend more here, we'll spend more there, and the stimulus bill was fulfilling uh, those campaign promises. Uh, a lot of that uh, stimulus money wasn't to be spent right away. In fact, there's still more that's pending to be spent out of that $800 billion, uh, even though right now uh, you know, everybody, uh, the, the uh, consensus of opinion of economists is the, is the economy is recovering, and yet that uh, stimulus money is still uh, coming into uh, the economy. Um, did we need that stimulus package in order to keep the economy from collapsing further? Uh, now, I, I don't know how much I should really put into President Obama's words, how much weight I should put on President Obama's words uh, at the time that he was arguing for the stimulus package. But uh, what he was arguing last winter when he wanted this thing passed was he, he was saying, if we don't pass this stimulus bill, that unemployment will rise up above 9%. So we need to pass this stimulus bill to keep unemployment below 9%. Uh, now the unemployment rate's about 9.7%. So if we use President Obama's own metric, this may be a little bit unfair to the president because you know maybe he underestimated the severity of the recession. But if we use President Obama's own metric here, the economy is in worse shape now than he'd forecast that it would have been if we hadn't passed the stimulus. Now, what's the logic behind this kind of stimulus spending? Uh, if you've taken some macroeconomics, you probably recognize it as uh, Keynesian economic policy. 